Hi everyone, it's Jeanette here from the Sewing Studio. Welcome to another tutorial, uh, which today is putting a lap zip into the back of a cushion front. Now last time we were making all the fronts of the cushions and quilting it, and we've used these lovely Bon Voyage fabrics by Janet Clare. It's a lovely collection of lovely sort of blues, teals and greens. And we've used that to make the front of the cushion. And I've used some of her uh, yardage that goes with that fabric to make the back of the cushion. And this was actually a fat quarter that I'm using for here. This was a 16 and a half inch uh, cushion and a fat quarter should be plenty big enough to make the back for that. So let's just put those fabrics to one side for a minute and we'll have a look. Uh, well, firstly, let me just show you what this lapped zip looks like. So you've got this little concealed zip under here. We're not actually using a concealed zip in there, but it's just we've, we've made a little flap which hides the zip away. It's just a normal um, dress zip or, or nylon zip that's gone into the back there, uh, which we put just put in flat and then we just create this little flap. So it's all nice and hidden. And also it's all sort of nice and soft. You haven't got any sort of lumpy bits you're, you're sitting against or anything on that. So that's what we're gonna make here today. So as I said, the fabric I've used is uh, the Bon Voyage by Janet Clare. And what I've done is I've just taken the, the um, fat quarter. Now the actual stripes on this ran that way. So that would have been selvage to selvage. But I wanted them to look like waves of the ocean because of the theme of the cushion. So I've cut it this way. So my selvages would have been sort of here. And I've taken it down to 16 and a half inches wide because that's the size of the cushion front I'm doing. And the bottom piece, you actually want to cut two sections for um, the lapped cushion. So the bottom bit, and that's this bit under the zip here. I've cut that 16 and a half by nine and a half. And then the top bit, which is all of this, and it includes the, um, the lapped section here, that's cut 16 and a half by 11 and a half. Now, because this was a fat quarter, I didn't actually bother trimming off. So you can sort of see it's still got the selvage there. Um, I just left whatever the quantity was. So I think this is actually about 12 and a half. There was about another inch on it. Um, but rather than trimming twice, I've just left it like that. Now, the other thing you can see I can do, and if I just put it here under the close up, I've just run it through my machine. I've got an overcasting stitch, which is like the sewing machine's equivalent of an overlocking stitch. And I've just taken my fabric and I've just run that through there. And that's just to finish the edge. And I've done that on both pieces. And for me, because it is an item that's likely to go in and out of the wash, it just gives it a little bit more durability um, and just sort of strengthens that seam on the edge there because that's the seam we're going to be attaching to the zip. Now, the other thing I've done on this is I've just folded over. I think this is about one and three quarter inches. Let me just measure it to check. But you can do anything one and three quarters up to about two inch, depending on how deep you want that lapped section to be. Yeah, that's one and three quarters. And I've taken that to the iron and I've done that ahead of time just to save a little bit of time um, and just made a, a crease with the iron. And then I've just gone back through and just done a little top stitch uh, about an eighth of an inch away from the edge there. And that's the bit that ends up being this, this section right here. And it just finishes that off. Now you don't have to do that stitch, but I think it just finishes that edge off and, and makes it look nice and professional. So these bits, um, I'm just gonna give a little press just to make sure they're nice and flat. I think that one's looking better, but we will just give it a press if we start with everything flat then it's going to end up flat and then also I'm going to press my zip because if you have a look at that you can see it's come up it's been a, a zip on the roll and it's come off and it's a little bit um, wonky curvy and that's just where it's been wrapped around the roll so you can just see there I've pressed one side and not the other and you can see that's already lying a lot flatter so the whole idea is, if your zip is flat to begin with, you're likely to put it in flat. Now, don't be afraid. I've got this on the hottest setting on the iron. Um, so it's on the cotton setting, and I'm actually just going to hit that from the back of the iron. You won't melt the nylon unless you held the, the iron there for a very long time. Um, but it will, take, it will take the heat of a hot iron. So you can see already there, that zip is, is lying much flatter. So we're ready now to sew the uh, zip into the cushion. Now I'm gonna start with the bottom piece and I'm gonna put the zip the way 
I want the zip to open. Now, let me just show you under the close up. If you look, there's always a flat part to the zip and then there's a rounded part. The zip will open in the direction of where that flat bit is. So you can sort of see there. So you can always tell which way that's going to open. So what I'm going to do is along the finished edge, this is the reason we finished it, and I'm gonna lay my zip so it goes face down. And I've used uh, a matching colored zip for this one, but you could actually use a contrast because it's hidden underneath. Um, it doesn't really matter what zip you put in, but we've got a nice blue one there. And I'm gonna take, oh, that's a very wonky pin. Let's try another one. I'm gonna take some pins and just put them in. And this really is just to hold it in place. Now, I don't use a lot of pins, uh, but I do for things like this, because you do want it to stay where you've put it. You can use um, the glue pen. You can just do a few dabs of glue. Less is more with the glue pen. Don't be too overzealous with the glue. Um, and also some people use uh, the seam tape. There's like a double-sided quarter inch thick tape you can use. Um, and some people like to hold their zip in with that. But there you can see we've just put the zips in and we've just got the edge of the zip lined up with the edge of the fabric. And we're gonna take that to the sewing machine. We've just got this under the sewing machine here now and I'm just making sure that those bits are lined up. Now you can see, I'm just gonna show you, my zipper head is here right out of the way. Now one of the uh, things to make uh, putting a zip in a lot easier is to use a, a, a zip longer than the area you're sewing because you don't have to sort of start and stop and try to get round the um, zipper head when we do that. So I'm just gonna start a little way back. I've got my machine set up with my zipper foot on it and we're just going to very gently just start to sew. Now, I've got the, the, the edge of the zipper foot running along the coil of the, the zip there. And what I do is I just have my finger there so I can sort of feel wh where that is, so I can make sure that I'm guiding the fabric. where that needs to go. So that's where we've sewed it there. Um, it's hard to see because I've used a, a matching thread, but if I just turn that over and you can see everything's all lining up nice and neatly at the top of the zip with the edge of the fabric. So we're just gonna take that to the iron and give it a press. Now I'm gonna set my seam as usual. I'm gonna press it from the zip side. It doesn't really matter which side you press that from. Just make sure on this bit you haven't got any tucks. But you can see there that's gone in really nicely. So I'm just gonna take that back to the machine and just do a top stitch just close to the edge. And all that does is it just makes sure your fabric doesn't creep up and get caught in your zip as you're opening and closing your cushion. Now I'm just gonna top stitch this. And you can see here, I'm just running the edge of where we've creased that back with the edge of the zipper foot. So that's the bottom part of our cushion put in. Now I'm just gonna give that another press because that's just gone a little bit wavy. There we are, that's the first bit. So now we're going to do the top half of the zip and we're gonna repeat that process 
So this time, the cushion's gonna come down there, our zip's there. So I'm just going to take that fabric and push it. Now, the one thing just to watch here is that you've got your edges lined up. So you don't want to be sort of over here. And you might want to put a pin there just to keep those edges together. And we're going to pin again. Let's bring the pins a bit closer. Now, always be a little bit wary when you're putting pins in because they do distort your fabric when they go in. These are actually nice fine ones, so they're not distorting anything too much. So that's ready to go to the sewing machine and let's put the second side down. So we'll just check that one, make sure we're happy. We'll take that pin out of how that's gone in. Yep, that's looking really good. So we'll take that to the iron and give that side a press. Now this is the bit where it's slightly different, because what we did on this side is we top stitched along here, but because we need to make the flap, all we're gonna do is, is take this little section here and just bring it down over the top. So it's ever so easy, just make sure it's nice and flat underneath. Let's just do that again. And this just takes a little bit of work just to make sure it's all nice and flat. And I have a look at it from this side, make sure I'm happy, make sure it's all lying nice and flat. I'm just gonna put a pin in that to hold it. And I'm gonna turn it over and pin from this side because now we're gonna to top stitch along here. And that's the bit, that's this stitching here which holds that flap down. So it's a really simple zip insertion this is probably about the fiddliest bit, but just take your time, make sure you're happy with how it's lying. And don't forget, if you don't get it first time, there is always the unpicker. Take that pin out now. And then I'm going to take that back to the iron, uh, sorry, sewing machine, not the iron, and give it one final top stitch, and then that will be the back done. Let's sew it from that side, because that's where my needle's set up. Right, so let's move that one. And you can see, because I've left the zipper head up there, I've not had to stop the sewing at any point and reposition anything, and that just means that you're not distorting anything. You're eliminating the possibility of things sort of moving around on you. So once again, I'm feeling where that coil of the zip is and I'm running the edge of the zipper foot along it. And there it is, there's the zip gone in. We've created our flap. Now I would just take that to the iron and give it one final press before I fitted it. Also, you just need to trim the ends of your zip back, remembering to take the zip head back in 
And if you want to, just put a couple of hand stitches there. Or sometimes I'll, once I've trimmed it, I'll use a little wonder clip and just put it on the end there to hold the ends of that zip together. And then your back of your cushion will be ready and we're ready for the final assembly. So we're ready now to put the binding on, which I've made from two, two and a quarter by width of fabric strips. And I have joined them with a mitered seam. Now I am gonna show you how to do that. Um, but the way I made this, the mitered seam on this, I will also be finishing the binding off on this with the same method. So you'll get to see that when I do that bit. That will make more sense when we get to that bit. The other thing I've just done here is I've trimmed the uh, zip that we've just put in to the back. And I've also made a lining. So if you remember when we quilted it, we just quilted it with the uh, cushion top and the wadding. And in the meantime, what I've done is I've made a lining and I've just done it by piecing some of the leftover five inch squares. I trimmed them down to four and a half inches and then just sewed them together with quarter inch seams. And that would then end up roughly the same size as our cushion front. The cushion front did actually slightly shrink a bit after the quilting, which often happens. Um, so this is all ready to go. The other thing I've just done ahead of putting the binding on is just to tack everything down. So if I put it under the close up there, you can see I've just gone round with a tacking stitch at about probably not even an eighth of an inch in. And that just helps to hold all the layers together because we've got quite a few layers there. And we've also got this lapped zip section that we want to sort of keep, keep down as much as possible. Now, the other thing I am going to do just before I take it to the machine is I am just gonna put a couple more pins in because what tends to happen sometimes with this lap zip is sometimes it can sort of flip up on us as we're going round. So I am just going to pin just on that lap section and I'm gonna put the pins quite far back. Let me just put that into shot so that it's, it's not gonna be interfering with our sewing. Actually, before I do that, let's just, I could feel the zip head was there. Let's move the zip head out of the way as well. So our foot's not going to hit that as we're going around putting the binding on. So we're just going to put those pins in. And that will just help to keep that section down as we approach that. It tends to just flip on one side because in one direction we're going with the fabric and in the other we're sort of going against, against the flow as it was. Okay, so I tend to start along this bottom edge because it's, it's the least visible place on the cushion um, when it's sort of sat on something. That is the, the, the bottom edge that you don't see very much. But to be honest, with a mitered seam, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, now, the one thing I am just going to do as well is check, and if I just grab a couple of clips here, I am just going to check where my mitered seam falls because we don't want it falling right in a corner because that's going to give us a problem when we do our mitre. So just roughly, I'm just sort of roughly measuring out where that's going to be. And it's there. So that's, that's really good because that's far enough away from the corner that it's not going to give us any problems. And if I felt it was a bit too close to that corner, I could move my binding a little bit that way. We've got plenty, two strips is plenty to go round. So we're gonna take that to the sewing machine now and stitch that down. Okay, so we've got it under the machine. Now I'm actually gonna start about here, really close to this first corner. Because we're going to do a mitered seam here, I want to give myself lots of room to work by the time I've come round the other end. Now I've got my quarter of an inch foot on and I'm going to sew this on with a quarter of an inch seam. So I'm just going to drop my presser foot just tech check my settings and we should be ready to go. Now, because I'm close to this corner, there's, there's a couple of things you can do here. If your foot has got markings on, and this one actually has got quarter inch markings, so I can judge on the foot where I need to stop. The um, rule of thumb is however wide your seam is, that's how far from this bottom edge you need to stop when you're sewing on the binding. But so you can all see it at home because you're probably not gonna be able to see the little uh, mark on the foot there. I'm actually gonna mark it with a chalk um, and if you haven't got markings on your foot this is this is a, a way of doing it just and I'm just going to get my chalk liner and I'm just going to mark right there which is a quarter of an inch in and that's going to remind me that's where I need to stop to turn my corner okay so we're ready to sew and just go nice and gently for this first corner Now I've stopped on that line. Now I'm just gonna reverse.
I was pressing the wrong button then. It's a bit of trouble when you use different machines. My buttons are in different places at home. So, and then I'm going to cut that thread. You get used to pressing the, the button. Now I'm just going to bring that back to the other overhead camera. So that's the little bit we've just sewn there. And we're now going to make our mitre. So the way we do that is we're just going to take this end of this thread and we're going to bring it straight up. And it should make a 45 degree angle there. And that should be going straight up and this should all be in line so the raw edge of the cushion with the raw edge of the binding and then we're just going to fold it back down the other way and now we've got three match points this folded edge here should be lining up with the raw edge there these two raw edges should be lining up and also we've got this little sort of triangle piece here and those two folded edges there should be sat right on top of each other and if we've got all of those in alignment, we're going to get a lovely mitered corner. Now I'm just going to put a clip there. I'm going to take that to the machine. I'm going to start stitching probably about there. Um, you can come in from the end, but because there's quite a lot of fabric there, sometimes it's, it's sort of quite bulky for the machine to get over. So I tend to start a little way in, reverse a couple of stitches and then come forward again. So you can see I've just placed it. I'm a little way in and I'm going to come forward. Just reverse a couple of stitches and then I'm going to keep going all the way down this edge. Oh, you can see there, it's just, it's a bit bulky. Let me just lift the foot and I'm just going to push that forward a little bit. Yeah, now it's caught. That's what can happen on that corner, which is why I start a little way in. Just going to make sure everything's lying flat. Now I'm going to be mindful because on this side is where we've got one of the um, flaps for the lap zip. Now I can feel we're coming up to it. So I'm just going to put my finger on it to make sure that it stays flat. Now I can feel I've just gone across the zip. So what I'm actually going to do is just go back a few stitches. And the reason we do that is just to reinforce that. That will be a stress point as you're opening and closing the zip. So we want that nice and secure. Now I'm getting close to the end, so I need to mark my quarter inch again. And I'm using my chalk because that's, I can see that more easily on the dark blue. And the reason I mark it now, rather than when we start sewing, is as you sew, it will be, the fabric will be being pushed sort of towards you. So if you marked it while you were, were still up at the other end, by the time you got to this end, your quarter inch may not even still be on your cushion. And then we're gonna reverse. And we're gonna cut our thread again. Lift our foot. I'm gonna turn this round and I'm gonna do this here at my machine, which is what, what I would normally do at home. And you can sort of get quite, quite good at it. You've still got those three match points. Yep. I'm just going to clip that down again. And on we go for the next side.
And I think this is our third corner. Now this is another side where our zip is, so we're just going to check that that flap is lying flat. And now this is the last corner. And on this one, I'm just going to sew just a couple of inches in and stop. Right, I'm just going to stop there. I'm going to take it to the mat. Take my clips off. So now we need to make the mitered seam. So this is the tail we started sewing and that's where we've just finished this side here now. And the rule of thumb is for a mitered seam, however wide your binding is unfolded, that's how much these two fabrics need to overlap. So I'm going to cut this first fabric down so it's sort of, it's going to end somewhere nearer the, to the centre. Let's just get rid of that bit of loose thread. <clears throat> and you can either do that with a pair of scissors or your rotary cutter. So I'm probably just going to cut it about there, st straight across. So that's my first one. And then this one, I need to overlap this one by two and a quarter inches. So I'm going to measure from this cut underneath a uh, piece of binding here, this one. Lay this one on top so I can see that underneath one. And I'm just going to measure across. Now, some people use the width of the binding. And we're going to mark that there. So let me just bring that in under the close up. So you can see there's our cut edge from our, our bit of binding underneath. And then we've come across two and a quarter inches and made a mark. Now, I'm going to cut, but just slightly to the inside of that mark. Um, and I don't think if you're anything like me, every time I do a binding, if you cut it precisely, you get to the last two or three stitches and you end up with a little bit of excess fabric. So actually let's do it with this ruler. I'm just going to cut and I'll show you where I'm cutting. Just about there. It's probably, it's probably a bit more than a sixteenth, but not quite an eighth. But that little bit of fabric seems to make a difference and you won't really miss it. So that's our two pieces now finished, ready for the mitre. Now for this, I use the folded corner clipper. And I discovered this oh, about four or five years back and it's just made making binding so much simpler. And when I um, do the join to join the two mitered seams, I use this as well. So all you do is this piece of fabric, we want that right side up on this. Let me just show you this a minute. Let me just grab, we've got a piece of paper here because I can show you the markings on this a little bit more clearly. So you can see there, um, I think they've got a bigger one out now as well, but this was the original one that I bought um, a few years back. And it's got all these markings with this little, what I call an uptick on the corner here. And this is the bit that really helps get your mitered seams right on binding. So the mark I'm looking for is this one here, two and a quarter, this dashed line between the two and the two and a half. So let's just move that back out the way. And I'll put this under here so you can see nice and close. And I'm going to line up that dashed two and a quarter inch line along the bottom. This little uptick goes on the raw edge there and the blunt point of the ruler should also be at the top of your fabric. And then, you know, you're, you're working with the right line and then we're just going to cut. So that's one of our ends done. And then the second end, we need to make the exact same cut in the exact same direction. So we're going to lie this fabric also right side up. Put our ruler on two and a quarter. 
two and a quarter, and cut. So what that ruler has done for us is cut off those two little bits, made our 45 degree angle, which includes the seam allowance on both pieces. So that's just a really handy tool. So I did the same when I was making the binding. I just used that and makes those cuts. And then if we just fold those two pieces together, you will see that they match the pins perfectly. I'm just going to pin like that. And you'll see when we sew that, that will make one long piece of binding. So let's take it back to the machine. And this is where you need, why, sorry, you need to um, leave yourself some room to work because you want everything to lay as flat as possible. So I'm going to put that, actually, I'm going to just put a little starter piece under because that's probably quite a small bit of fabric it's going to, and I've not got my single whole throat plate in. You just want to, so I'm just going to position that a little bit. Take your time. I'm going to remove my pin before I get to it. I don't sew over pins. So there you can see we've got a binding which fits perfectly on that side. So all we've just got to do is take that to the iron and just press that seam open. And then I'm going to press the binding in half again. So there it is. And we're ready now just to finish that seam. So there it is. Now I just do one final check all the way around the edge just to make sure I'm happy with how the binding's gone on. I've got a little thread there I just need to clip out. Uh, but that binding then is ready for me to just sit in front of the TV this evening and slip stitch that down. Um, so I use the Wonder Clips just to go round and bring that binding round to the back. And then we'll have a lovely completed Cushion. So that's a nice little bit of hand sewing for me to do later. Okay, so I'll just show you how to do this corner. So I just fold it a little way back here. I'm just going to grab a clip and put that on. Then you just sort of pull that corner out and just fold it back. And it should make, it's quite hard to see on this navy fabric, but it, you should make a nice little 45 degree mitre. And then I'll just put a clip on that to hold it. So I've just clipped the binding in place for now and put the cushion pad inside just so that you can see how lovely that's looking. C can I say that about my own work? I think I'm going to. Um, and then we've got our lap zip section on the back that's all concealed and it's all looking lovely. So we've got the original one and we've got this one and I've just got another one to show you. I've done a, made another one in a different colorway. So this one is with the reds and blues, looking either sort of patriotic or nautical, whichever. So now I'm not going to have to keep borrowing my sisters. I've got some of my own to use. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Please feel free to share any photos of your makes with us through our social media. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope you'll join me again here next time in the sewing studio. <laughs>